Hello. Hello. Welcome to episode two. Of the Granite City Bodybuilding Podcast, I suppose, yeah. Um, today in the studio, we have with us a very special guest. Yeah, so uh, a gentleman that me and Rob have both worked with in previous times, coaching-wise, and um, yeah, just an all-round awesome dude. And I think I'd like to maybe reference his, well, I've certainly heard the name being tossed about with the the godfather of Scottish building. Well, Scottish building? <laughs> Scottish bo- godfather of Scottish He's also building. a brickie. Yes. <laughs> uh, Available for extensions and DIY. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically one of the most prominent figures, I'd like to think. Is the voice of the PCA, yeah. Mr. Stephen Cassidy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just <joking. laughs> that, that, that was theatrical. Yeah, yeah. That. used to have um, bigger applause than that a bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we used to bigger audiences as yeah. well. Well, well maybe f- not me. Used to a few things bigger than this, but yeah. <laughs> no good, yeah. um, You'll take any gig just now, though, would you? <laughs> it's a bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we credit that better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, Stephen, why have we brought you all the way to Aberdeen? Thank you for coming, by the way. It's mm-hmm. fantastic of you. Um, fun road trip up from Glasgow? Yes, um... Listening to sad songs in the, in the rain, the way the way three hours here, yeah. yeah. What's, what's the what's the go to sad song playlist like? Oh, I'm a country man right now, mate. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm a country guy right now, so Chris Stapleton, I, big fan of him currently. I Aaron Lewis is normally a go to guy. The mm-hmm. former frontman of Stained has no. country stuff. Yeah, um, nodding like I know all these ones. I, <laughs> Howdy, should have yeah. played them all in a mix um, before once. <laughs> yeah, there, there's there's a couple, um, but yeah, it's just um, and I, I also watched them. Um, I believe what was it called? Episode one. Yeah, yeah. A podcast and yeah. Oh, to try yeah, yeah. and familiarise myself with just who you two guys actually are. Yeah, yeah. up to twelve views. How now. did you? How did you get on? That's just up to two <laughs> views now. <laughs> yeah, I watched it twice. Um, yeah, it was it was good. Um, it's nice to see people actually promoting Scottish bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a word. It's uh, synergistic. I think we uh, we uh, we love what the PCA Scottish does. Um, and what you bring to the uh, what's the word to the table, the scene, yeah. the 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 landscape of uh, Scottish bodybuilding. So obviously, the PC is a monster, like a mm-hmm. powerhouse, and we piggyback off that, um, like a like a flea on the back of a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> we piggyback off that. Um, so yeah, it's great to have you on, man. Yeah, on. I think it's uh, I think it's someone someone like this especially. Um, it's just so important because it's not it's not about it's not about us it's not about either granite and it's not about the PCA it's literally just a case about this is Scottish bodybuilding and this is kind of this is kind of where it's going or where it's becoming and, you know you're with the PCA as well you're a way to do your first Scottish Expo I believe yeah so I mean just for a bit of um, clarity for anyone listening mm. at the was it the first granite show. Yeah, that was before I was pretty much full time in a PCA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I was up here with you guys assisting. Yeah. Back you helped with the lighting and everything, man. Uh, I did, mate. Set up. Absolute um, god, godsend on the day. Uh, like, mm-hmm. huge so, I, uh, as you say, it's kind of it's almost symbiotic that the you want the whole scene to improve. The whole, yeah. um, if Scottish bodybuilding is going to get better, then people have to work together. Yeah, um, to, to make it better. Obviously, with the PCA for me, it's, it's a bigger picture than that because we've got. 30, 34, 35 shows in the yeah. UK this year. Which so is mental. I, think. Um, I was at yeah. the uh, I was at the Hull show, and I got to see the. Thank you for uh, letting me in before anyone else. That's <laughs> nice of you. Um, thank you also to the uh, security guard in the back door that I blagged it past. Top man, <laughs> gave my can of monster and he let me in. Um, He's not going to get a job next year. No, <laughs> fired. Um, but I got to see the size of the operation, and it is it is gargantuan, man. It is absolutely gargantuan. But it was really cool to see. Like we've got this little show up in the, the northeast of Scotland. Mm-hmm. We're trying to make it as big and, uh, and as sexy as we can. I don't even think we're trying to make it as big and as sexy as we can. I think we're just trying to make it as... There's cool. probably a word for it somewhere. We're just trying to do the best that we possibly can yeah. to give people such a good platform to come up and to sort of do their thing on. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. so Rob and I have discussed this in various conversations. Um, and it's... They're different. Mm-hmm. Right? They're different shows. Um, and it's probably like, I don't know, we're not quite franchised, but we, we, we're a, we've, we've got a travelling circus yeah, that yeah. goes around a different town almost, not every week, right, but 
from March until June, July time. We're every week. Mm. We got a few weeks off, and then we're every week again up until the end of the year. You've got one show, right? And it's almost like, you know, I don't know, having a pop-up restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. You can be individual, you can be different. I like that, we're a pop-up restaurant. Um, but you can do something unique. You can do something that's tailored to where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? We've said this before, like, people love the Granite Show because of the personality of the Granite Show. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we try and bring as much personality to the PCA shows as we can, but that has to be spread UK wide and now yeah. worldwide as well mm -hmm. on very similar formats. Yeah. So it's there are a lot of boxes that we have to tick where you can be very specific about who you're tailoring that to. Mm -hmm. Now we're also we're all tailoring to bodybuilders. Yeah. But you're very much tailoring yours to Scottish bodybuilders, particularly in the north. Yeah. You're doing one show. You can be very specific with what you're doing, whereas mm -hmm. we're kind of like, right, okay, this has to tick all these boxes and. So they're very different um, purely because of the scale of the PCA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But people people love the personality of the granite. And it, and it's not that one show is better than the other. Um, you, you can sit and argue all day about the pros and cons. Yeah, like they're very go, different. Very different. You're like, well, yeah, PCA gets more people there and we get more spectators and we get more. Mm -hmm. right? Some people love the fact that it's a smaller show. It's more intimate. Mm -hmm. yeah. That they know you and Rob and they bump into you guys in the gym and all this sort of stuff. There's pros and cons for everyone. It's, yeah. it's not a case of one's better. They're different. Yeah, <coughs> but, yeah I would completely agree. But I, think <laughs> I, took a, I took a bunch of stuff away from the shows I saw this year. Some shows I saw this year were better than others. Um, but if you use the PCA Hall, I think what I was really impressed with was no matter the level of competitor, um, if they came out and there wasn't a big applause from them, or the judges, you <laughs> came a big round of applause. Um, that was really cool to see because... Well, I've been there, you've been there, like walking out on stage that first time. If you don't get a, a round of applause, man, it's a very daunting experience for people. Mm -hmm. And you can see them almost shrink down. Give them a big round of applause, watch them pop up. But this is why bodybuilding needs bodybuilders involved, though. Mm -hmm. People that have been there and done it. Yeah. And, and, and lived that. So I actually done a show in Aberdeen pre... That the Silver City Silver one? Silver City, yeah. 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 I went to watch that. I went to watch that. Um, now, I didn't like being on, which is very weird for me to say that I don't like being on stage. Yeah. In a competitive sense. Mm -hmm. But I know that I don't look great. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just, I'm not a good bodybuilder. Yeah. I love being on stage doing what I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but I went to that show on my own. Never told anyone I was doing it. Just turned up on a day, done it. Um, I actually won my class at the, the a show the day previous. And someone just, well, why don't, don't you go to it tomorrow? Yeah, might as well jump in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll jump in. And I seen um, our daily departed Brian, who just lost a few yeah. weeks back, um, who was judging that day. And, he, um, and I'm like, he's like, whoa, what a difference. You look so good. You've dried out. Kind of made a few tweaks. That's Brian Harris, ladies and gentlemen. That's my first ever bodybuilding coach. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, Brian. Big character in the uh, Scottish bodybuilding scene. I, yeah, I sadly done Brian's eulogy a couple weeks ago. Um, mm which tried to make as interesting as what Brian was. He but, was a character, definitely yeah, was a character. Yeah, but we can't say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Stephen knew better at that point and used one or two things with a lot of carbs. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I'm going to fill out, I'm looking dry, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. <sighs> Water bag. Yeah. Just terrible. Um, I think I maybe heckled you, to be fair. Yeah, being be on stage when you've not got anyone there supporting you, and if you know you're not looking as good as you can be, or you know you're not going to win, or play, and win is not everything here, but that silence I is think, awful. Like, what what mm -hmm. I noticed, I, I was doing naturally is because I, I sat with the... Uh, uh, I sat there in the front row or the second from front row at all the shows this year uh, that Catherine did. Um, got to see you doing your hosting thing, which is cool to see. But I ended up clapping for people that I, I'd never met before in my life because other shows, they'd walk out and there'd be dead silence. I'm like, come on, Pete, let's go, let's see it. <laughs> um, that guy's like, oh, cool, there's somebody here. Boom, double bicep. Yeah, I mean, like, I, atmosphere just lifts, man. I, like um, an easy thing to do. Think about noise. I, I give, particularly at the first timer shows, which we've got seven of this year, which is incredible amount of new blood. How many was that, sorry? Seven. Seven first timer shows. Um, 
So the, the new blood coming into bodybuilding is, is phenomenal. That's our biggest class as well. Yeah, our first timers, first -timers is, is enormous. Yeah. And uh, I think that was that was a big shock to us last year. Now, obviously, you know, we've spoken about not trying to compete with, with like, the likes of PCA, but the big first timer show was on the same day last year in Birmingham, was it? Birmingham, I believe the Birmingham show was on the same day, but we still had a very, very busy first timers class. It was almost quite humbling to think that, you know, that gigantic monster of a show was on for first timers. We yeah. still had a solid turnout. Yeah, yeah that was cool. Yeah, yeah so it was a it was, you know, really, really cool scene. Like, yeah, but yeah, was, I think was, first timers, I think maybe social media is playing into the hand of it, but a lot of new faces coming through the door is just phenomenal just now. And obviously you're, you're able to put on seven shows in a year with new people yeah. coming to compete. It's yeah, phenomenal. So FT5, which is in September, I think, that's about 90% full. So we've got 300 plus athletes registered for oh. that show, which is in September. Um, <laughs> Busy day, bud. Jesus. Yeah. Um, we were doing okay. <laughs> so um, FT1 sold out last year, sold out, filled up completely. We're now sold out tickets wise as well. That's the wow. first show, which will be a week before you guys. Yeah. Um, is there FT1? But yeah, I, I give a little speech because, particularly with first timers, mm. right? They're not just bringing their partner or their best mate or whatever, right? They're bringing them up. They're bringing a whole minibus. Right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, People yeah. with T-shirts and the it's yeah, cardboard. It. It's WWE stuff. I give them a bit of chat as well. Like, <coughs> bit of noise for the first timers, especially guys. Like, yeah. put them at ease. So I try and explain like, um, sometimes all the brown stuff you see on these people isn't they just tan. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so nerve wracking coming up here. Yeah. The, the lights are so bright. They walk out, deer in the headlights, they forget everything, but they have trained potentially for years. They have dieted for however, 12, 16, 20 weeks, yeah. and they're going to get a few minutes on stage. Mm -hmm. right? I don't care if it's a person you're here to see or not. When they walk out, you applaud. Yeah. When they hit a pose, you applaud. When they do the routine, applause. Yeah. And I, I kind of go a bit sarcastic, and I'm like, when we announce the results, guess what? And they're like, we applaud, and I'm like, ah, oh, you're getting it right. Okay, let's go. It's almost like a panto now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so you did there. It's quick, quick. Like that. <laughs> it was good for you, man. Um, that was that uh, supplement you gave me earlier, actually. So. Yeah, <laughs> must be. What was that stuff called? Uh, Rise and Shine, mate. Rise and Shine. Um, Anything you want to tell us about that particular sub? I, apart from the fact that it's a product that I designed from the ground up. Yeah. Um, must be proud. Apart from the fact that we sold out of 250 tubs in nine days. I'm aware you sold out. I tried to get some, you know, sold out. Um, yeah, it's went, it's went exceedingly well. Um, yeah. So it's, it's um, produced by Pit Stop mm -hmm. in Glasgow. We got our second product that I've designed and that I'm trialing just now. Yeah. Much less of a kind of, not a high impact product like that, not something you'll immediately feel. Mm -hmm. um, we've got another new product which we are hoping to release on the weekend of the Scottish, which um, should be another really interesting product, um, two or three in the pipeline currently. So, um, yeah, Neil's putting out a very, very good product. Yeah. Um, uh, the quality is high. Taste this. Tastes banging. Tastes mm -hmm. good. I see we've got a couple, couple of samples in there of new flavours to try. Um, a couple of people were saying they don't like peach for whatever reason, and I'm like... Um, Weirdos. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it tastes nice. It's a bit on the sweet side if you have it with not a lot of water, but... Yeah. Uh, when you've got a panel that's got so many ingredients, it's so well dosed, your flavour has to be kind of strong. Yeah. yeah. You're trying to mask a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so again, when the new flavours we're trying, it's like, you know, do we go share, but anyway, do we go sour, do we go tart, yeah. do we go sweet? Yeah. Like, you, you need to try and mask the ingredients. I in think there. even even the branding of it as well, it's not like because you, you see like nine out of ten supplements is on the shelf now. It's almost like hardcore death, X thousand death fuck shit. Yeah. <laughs> and like all like hardcore writing with a skull on it. <laughs> not that and there's nothing like, against crack. It's like you kind of get a bit bored of it and it looks very samey whereas I could probably look at one of those things and think oh that's a little bit that different. looks nice and friendly Slide it on camera. yeah um, yeah I can kind of look at that and think oh that's that's a little bit different it looks quite fresh yeah it looks a bit well, fresh not go that cheap really maybe nice. cover your face <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no I, I can I can wholeheartedly confirm uh, it's very very tasty stuff yeah so it seems to be quite it seems to be working <laughs> um, <laughs> is that a, a, <laughs> what would I do my ass <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I I I have always had a fascination with um, the the en enhancement side of things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, currently being old as fuck now, um, and the the greys are coming in, and the, mm -hmm. the brain's starting to go. 
You look um, fantastic, FYI. For 24, sure you're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not far off twice that now. <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, but uh, my, my latest thing is Nootropics. Mm -hmm. um, so when discussing this with Neil, I'm like, yeah. so I've got a bunch of standalone ingredients that I take. Mm. And I'm like, right, okay, so I know this and this works, but how about if we done... So we, we'd done two or three different samples, and I'm like, so there's only 50 milligrams of caffeine in there, mm -hmm. um, tight, which is a very small amount of caffeine compared to most products. Um, and it's more so just to potentiate some of the other ingredients. Yeah. Um, but the feedback's been absolutely incredible. Um, it's the demand is still people coming in the shop and, and asking, like, if you, mm -hmm. when's it coming back? When's it coming back? Yeah. Um, so we've got a two so week Whatever you've laced it with, that's worked. Yeah. <laughs> 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 little sprinkle and a crack in there, mate. So, um, <laughs> fucking um, rare to go. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of stuff in the pipeline. Um, and also, Pit Stop are going to be doing an open date on the Saturday. Before the show. Before the show. So we've got the tanning, which is taking place in the NFA gym. And Pit Stop is actually in the same... It's like an industrial complex, like kind of... That's in the same building. Indoor, uh, yeah, it's in the same building, yeah. indoor roads. So it's maybe 50 yards from where NFA is to um, Pit Stop is. So our main sponsor, CNP, are going to be there as well, doing a bit of sampling and stuff. There'll be a few members of the PCA team, a couple of PCA mm. pros... Um, and I guess I say we'll have hopefully the, the next kind of high impact product oh, to be launching there as well. So again, it's just trying to make, um, and obviously we'll come into more detail about the new venue and stuff, but it's trying to make, and I think you guys said this as well about the um, your show, mm. try to make an event. Yeah, something people really want to go to. Mm -hmm. like you, you mentioned earlier about the, you know, the first time I bring in their whole family. So I wanted it to be a show that like you could take your nan to. Yeah. She'd be like, Whitney Houston's on. Fantastic. <laughs> like everyone gets involved. <laughs> on on that very topic. Um, so we had Elliot A. Robinson. Anyway, he's new mm. PCA Pro classic oh, guy. Fantastic routine. Incredible yeah. poser. So when, when anyone does a show with us and they're a, an amateur and they get the pro card and they then go on to do the pro class at the same. So this was, I believe that was finals. Mm -hmm. British finals so they don't do their routine again at night time because you might have say 10 people in that class uh -huh. and so we're like okay well, anyone that's not done a routine does their routine and I said to her I was like do, do you want to do your routine again mate and he's like any chance I can get to pose I'm taking it yeah so I said to the crowd I went look normally Elliot wouldn't get to do his routine again however yeah it takes a real man to post to Whitney Houston. <laughs> um, I, I saw it, man. It was unbelievable. He um, got, uh, did he not get nominated? Because I remember the PCA did a big whole nomination thing for the best routine. Did he not get nominated for yeah, it? Yeah, I think he won it. Yeah. He won it, did he? Yeah. yeah, he's a phenomenal there was a few. Incredible. Um, on, on that, actually, so we've just announced so this year, also we've done all the nominations online mm -hmm. last year. So this year we're actually going to have a, a black tie ball. Oh, nice. So inviting the poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you can throw a couple of quid in for a Granite City table. Who should, who should I take? It's my plus one. I knew that was coming. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. Um, so we're actually looking at a. I can name a few people. <laughs> to be fair, but it's probably not the best place to name it. You could, you come with me if you want, man. Is that all right? Yeah. Sure. Um, I'm expecting my own fucking invitation. <laughs> Fuck sake. Fuck you. That's a Get my own table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were going down. I uh, actually have a proper award ceremony this year, proper black tie at yeah. the end of the season. So we'll put the nominations up after the Worlds, and then this is two weeks later, give people a chance to vote. Uh, I believe we're just working on just now what the awards are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, the trophies are being, trophies, uh, awards are being designed. Something a little different from the usual PCA trophies stand out a little bit, but it'll be proper black tie at a very, very fancy um, location. Uh, and we're going to be offering kind of like VIP tables and all that sort of thing to mm. vendors. So, for example, if, if Granite City wanted to get a, a table for 10, you could get a Granite City table and whatever. And Do us a deal. Solid. Cheers. Knock off a quid, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we're actually going to have uh, an award ceremony this year. I mean, I think it's something that, and I spoke to Ryan, Ryan being the main guy behind the PCA, I says, I'm actually really looking forward to it because when I turn up on a, a show in the morning, um, I don't wear my suit unlike Pete to the first show. 
Um, I'm glad it's someone <laughs> never loving it down, man. Never loving yeah. it down. Uh, Ricky, so yeah, I've, I've got the shorts and t-shirt and stuff on, and there's Rob's witness. There's mm. a lot of unpacking to do and yeah. get the stage ready and stuff, <clears> and get everything lined out and sorted. And so there's a lot of work to do. Then next chance I get for a break is lunchtime, and I usually get like 20, 30 minutes. But by that point, I want to grab a bite to eat, get mm. my feet up. So there'll be a number of people coming to whatever show that I'll see, and I'm giving a little wave to her. Hi, yeah. how are you? And I'm just miss the social act because when it comes to the end, so we we get to the the overalls. Most people don't stay for the overall, yeah, unless you know the person that's in it. A few hardcore yeah. bodybuilding fans will be there to the end, but the time we do the overall, get pictures, do this, do that, I look out and I'm like, well, everyone's gone. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that that's the element where what I do does become a job because you turn up and what I'm looking forward to is obviously um, I'll I'll be hosting the the awards. Is that we're going to have like a full on disco party night out thing so we're going to do well, if you're looking for a dj <laughs> i know if you know yeah how uh, how did you get into into the promoting and the hosting if you don't mind me asking i promoting and hosting um just loudmouth selling sports socks and that in the yeah corner. yeah, two, yeah. Two, two for a pounder um <laughs> i branched out any lighters and then he went let's just get this guy in um <laughs> to mind it was uh it was rab and mags at the the PCA in Motherwell, is it Motherwell. Yeah, so oh, so yeah. the PCA use kind of much like you said on the previous podcast was people who are involved in bodybuilding thought how can we make this better, mm -hmm. how can we improve this, how can we just take this up a notch, just make yeah. it a little bit better. And you had individual promoters across the country. I don't remember mm -hmm. how many shows it was, um, yeah. but you had a few, and each promoter done their own thing. But you had a centralised team. Yeah. Um, but can I, is that, that's what I mean. Franchise is the wrong word, right? But you've got branding across yeah, it all, yeah. and you've got brand standards essentially. Um, yeah. So, Rab and Mags, I uh, initially ran the show, and I don't remember what what year it was. Um, the second or the third year of the PCA Scotland. Now, I I think I missed the first year. the The second year of the PCA was when Jordan. Peter's yep. JP had yep. the, the train by JP Grand Prix mm -hmm. when we had a um he guest posed as well. I remember seeing that. Yeah. He walked out and I think he hit four poses. Looked terrifying, no tan or nothing, just in his hot pants, hit four poses and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, eh, 320 pounds on a guy who's five four. <laughs> That's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah. So Jordan had the train by JP Grand Prix, big cash prizes and stuff back then. And because I was working on the train by JP site as an educator back then. Yeah. Um, he offered kind of my coaching brand the opportunity to, to sponsor the mm. one of the overalls. So I sponsored the, was the overall female and Eva, my daughter, who does yeah. medals and stuff with the PC as well. Actually, there's photos of her <coughs> on stage with the, oh, the overall female winner. So I've kind of been around the PCA's kind of since its inception. Yeah. Um, not quite for the very start, but close to it. And again, Rab and Mags were looking for sponsors for classes and stuff when they were starting. So again, a coaching brand was sponsoring classes and whatever else. Yeah, but that, well, that was that was evolution coaching. Was it? Yeah, evolution. yeah. What's Deep. it called now? Coached by Stephen. Coached by Stephen. Yes, yeah, innovative and unique and search on Instagram. Never there, been there, done before. There, there is only one Stephen now. Coached I'm, by I'm Stephen. I'm the only guy known as Stephen. The voice anymore. of the PCA. Yeah. So I I was at work and got a message from I believe it was Max, and it was. We need someone who is intelligent, who is eloquent, who's got a good vocabulary. And I'm like, she fucking sent, she's sent to the wrong person. Who the fuck is that? What is, that? What is this? Um, <laughs> the fuck's eloquent? <laughs> <laughs> she spelled, she spelled elephant wrong. What? Um, so, yeah, I was like, there is absolutely no way in hell I can do public speaking. I cannot do this. And I phoned. Jordan at that point yeah. um, and I'm like mate I've just been offered the opportunity to, and he's like there's no way you can't do this yeah. if, you, if you're because again at that time my coaching was really taking off and stuff so he's like that's the opportunity for you to get on stage in front of hundreds of people yeah. people know your faith people respect and he's like you need to do it and I'm like oh shit you're right I, I kind of need to do this mm -hmm. yeah. so I've done the first one and I thought I bombed massively Okay. Um, imposter syndrome. Uh, yeah. You just you always see the worst in yourself. Every year I go through that. <laughs> yeah, you suck though. Yeah. A <laughs> uh, couple of weeks later, I got a message saying, "Would you like to come in Newcastle and host a show?" Mm -hmm. um, 
and I was like, couldn't have been that bad. Yeah. So I'd done the Scottish and the Newcastle for a couple of years. Then I got asked to go and help. So Eddie used to do all the rest of the shows. Yeah. So I asked to go, asked to go and help Eddie at the finals because um, the finals were huge. Yeah. Come and give him a hand. Was doing that, and then I've told this story so many times now. I was actually I moved a chain. I worked with, worked with JP, and mm. then left JP due to some family stuff that was going on. Uh, mm. A partner at the time, her dad was end of life care, and mm. that point something's got to give. So yeah, yeah. moved away for that, and then Doctor Dean asked me to set up supplement needs education. So yeah. we set that up. So we're doing a seminar in pool or southampton whatever it was mm -hmm. we were also um sponsoring a show by another federation in the same area so yeah. friday and then saturday so i stopped in uh, at saxon gym which is ryan's gym which yeah. is basically break the drive up about halfway mm. i'll pop in see ryan have a chat get some food and then i'll, I'll do the rest of the drive mm -hmm. and he says what are you doing sunday I was like, i'm just going to be heading home mate mm -hmm. do you want to come and host a show in wales I'm like, I don't have my suit or anything. Like, I don't have. It's like, no, no. But when you go home, get your. No, but I'm not going home. Mate. I'm I'm going all the way down yeah. to the South England, so I had to get my suit and stuff posted to the <laughs> hotel that we're staying at and drive yeah. from Southampton to Wales, um, host the Welsh show and then drive home after that. And I have done ninety nine percent of PCA shows in the UK since then. Wow. Um, so I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty phenomenal task. Most people would have just nipped to Asda and got a got a George number or something, but now nah, you posted. It makes you person. think, though. I mean, where where would you be now if you had said no? Nah. You know what I mean? Like if you said no, nah, right? It's, it's a bit much. I'm, Pivotal moment. Eh? I'm not pissing about going driving here and driving there. So Maybe next time, you know. So that's, that's, that's do I get too deep and meaningful? But that's that's life. Yeah. Like, do if, you, if you if you no, but if you if you get offered an opportunity, take it. Yeah. Like, because as you say, where, where would I be? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't mean that as in, like, I'm, or I am somebody, right? But. No, but I mean, I think, you know, being as, as sort of as mod modest and as humble as we are, like, you're, in my eyes, one of the faces of sort of British bodybuilding now. Because every everybody who steps on a PCA stage or anybody who attends a PCA show knows who you are now. Like you're the you're the voice like of the show. You're the, earlier, you put the them all at ease, man, and that has a lasting impression. Eh? So the not old war stories and stuff, but the amount of times where I went on stage and the person I was dealing with was not great. Um, like if somebody gives you a bit of chat, gives you a bit of banter, tells you to relax, say everyone's going to be okay. Like everyone I speak to that interacts with you and their way to go on stage says you put them at ease. Yeah. And that's... Like, that carries weight, man. Yeah, man. So I was actually saying this to Ryan just the other night because we're talking about a lot of things. And, in post yeah, I'm very much an overthinker. Um, massive imposter syndrome. And so Eddie done that for years. Eddie was one of the original OGs that set up the PCA. And I think mm -hmm. he just kind of had enough. Um, so for the first, however long, it just felt like I was doing Eddie's job. Um, just almost filling in for someone mm -hmm. else who was who was the man that does that. And I think really going into the second half of last year, um, I've been doing this for like three, four years now, but there was a few comments, um, like we went to the PC Island show and people were asking me for photos. And I'm like, That's, yeah, of course, like, cool. And it's, it doesn't... I don't, I don't, nobody asked me for a photo. <laughs> I do, but you always step forward. You always step forward yeah, with Cammy's photos. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Cammy Duncan being a bit smaller than me. Uh, but you, it's always hard to see yourself how other people see you. Yeah. yeah. Right, so again, as we said, like a big part of the Granite City show is Rob's on stage. Right? Rob's cutting about, hitting bicep poses, having a laugh with people. Just it's to be clear, I didn't sign up to be a bodybuilding host. I just, I just don't trust yeah. anyone else to do it. Hey. Hi, hello. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You've got stuff to do, mate. Yeah, hey. I'm too far. I'm and, quite busy on the day. You know, I, I remember many years ago when, I, well, you guys know Charlie, one of my a, well, former clients now. He's kind of retired. But yeah. um, we took Charlie down to the uh, British Fed NABA, NABA finals at that point. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he placed third. The finals, which that point was the was Northern the class, show, was, yeah. yeah, it was good. And he came out, and it was um, Steph Sinton at the time, yeah, was just hanging about the door. 
And Charlie came out and Steph got a little pat on the shoulder and stuff. Also realised he was Scottish. Mm -hmm. Looked really good in there, mate. Really impressive. Blah blah blah. And Charlie's like, "Oh, thanks, mate." And walked off. Now Charlie's no big into bodybuilding. I didn't know who Steph was. And I'm like, "Mate, that's 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 Steph. That's like, yeah." And this is where it's weird because Scottish bodybuilding. But that point, I'm looking at. That's the guy that that hosts a big show in Scotland. That's the guy. That's this guy. And it's like, and it, it's just it's it's hard to think and go. I don't mean people look at me and go, oh, that's that guy, because I was never a big figure in bodybuilding competitively, mm -hmm. because Steph was Mr. Universe and stuff like that. But you then think... The first show I... I, I run the show. first show I, I competed show. at, mm -hmm. he, uh, he guest posed at the first show I competed at. And I remember I was walking in, like you've just said that conversation. I stopped Steph sitting there, and I was, and I was just like, that was some of those beautiful posing I've ever seen, man. Fantastic. And he was like, oh, cheers, mate. Off he went. Yeah. Like, but that's unreal. the point. Look, he, he'll, he'll look at the work he puts in, the effort he puts in, yeah. and he'll see flaws. Yeah. Like he won't see what we're going, oh my God, that guy's incredible. Um, as I say, as I said, the last few months, last year, it was like, there's a few comments from people like, um, yeah, yeah, when you done that, that really made my day. Thank you for doing this. That was mm -hmm. so enjoyable. So a couple people asking for pictures and stuff. And for whatever reason, something just clicked and I went, fuck it, I'm just going to enjoy this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I'm going to stop overthinking about like, mm -hmm. Am I going to mess this up at some point? Are they going to, going to replace me? Am I going to like yeah, just all that present. kind of just no? I'm just I'm just going to just go full pelt into this. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the laughs you got with some of the competitors when you just I almost disconnected that kind of brain to mouth barrier. Yeah, because being on stage in front of hundreds of people, you're like, okay, I need to be PC. I need to be. Well, yeah. you don't want to upset anyone, right? But at the same time, I'm probably not the type of person that would deliberately upset anyone. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. But you're like, okay, I need to think about, and I'm, like, I'm just going to disengage that and just, just have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was it's so much. The second half of last season was brilliant. Yeah. It was it was really it was so much fun. We had a great laugh at the, the World Championships. So we went to Spain for the World Championships, and normally we do the um, um, the overall, mm -hmm. get the sword, put it in the middle, and Ryan's like, can we turn the lights off and put on the announcement music? So we turn the lights off, but there's still a little bit of soft background lighting. So I'm picking up the stone with a sword and putting it in the middle, right? Mm. They put every single light off in the whole place. And I'm like, I'm carrying this sword with this stone. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't see where oh I'm going. <laughs> we fall off the stage, Michael Hearn style. Uh, no, I actually said that at the microphone. And I'm like, right, I think that might be in the middle. But if it's not, don't, don't shout at me. And then light, I'm like, lights go up. Here's just a yeah. Steve with a massive fucking sword. <laughs> and then I was like, I explain that one to the insurance. Yeah. I could actually just see the light on my tablet because it was a very wide stage. I could see the light on my tablet. I'm like, if I just if I just walk towards that in a straight line, I know that I'm going to get to where the lectern is yeah. and I won't follow. I was like, if you hear anything banging, don't worry. It's just me falling off stage, etc. So, got a good laugh out of that because yeah. no one expected the lights to go that far off. Mm -hmm. And then, apologies to whoever won the um, the sword at that point, but I cracked a joke. I was like, Congra "Congratulations, Rob! There you go. Overall, Mister Mister World, well done." Um, says, "There's your sword. Good luck in customs. <laughs> Turn the back." And again, people were just, and I'm like, "It's just, it, it's." It's little quips. It's being yeah. reactive at the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just I love my job. I really do. Yeah. Um, I've said this. So it many, shows, man. It shows. It shows. I've said this to so many people. It's like we get to the end of the season after, and we do pretty much more shows every year. But say we done thirty shows last year, and you get to that last show, and you're like, "That's me. I'm done. I'm yeah, out. Steam. Out. I'm retired. I'm not doing this again. I can't keep this up because sometimes I'm not getting home until like." One, two, three o'clock on sun, Sunday night, Monday morning, and I'm back up at six for work. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, I'm out, I'm done. And then you get a few weeks off, and it comes into the new year, and you just happen to hear one of the PCA pose down songs on the radio or whatever, and you're like, 60 second pose down. But the, <laughs> the head starts going, you're like, oh, when are we back? I can't wait. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's just, it's such a good team, it's such a good vibe when you're there. I think rolling off of that as well, I think, you know, a lot of people tend to forget that you're not just. A PCA dude, like you have a full time job on top of this as well. Yeah, a legitimate career and a coaching. Business. Yeah, and I find I I find that like like massively like just kind of almost like inspiring because obviously like I there's there's days where I'll get like I'll be met working mental days right like this this job I've been working away for about nine weeks now I've been a long long time working away and I've still got to do all the show stuff on the side and then I kind of think to myself is this getting a bit much but then I'm like. Well, no, because when it comes down to the day, I love the day. 
yeah. like like for yeah. the for the monumental amount of work that we maybe put in, like to yourself as well, for the amount of work that we put in for the nine, ten months leading up to the show, it comes down to the day. So much fun. No, but it's worth it. It's totally it's, worth it. And eh? that, that's as I say, that's the it's for us it's not just the show and it's a again, I wouldn't depress people with my, my story of the last kind of couple of years and stuff, right? But I've had a kind of major loss in my life and the PCA is genuinely a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's genuinely the support system there. I mean, we're almost like a travelling circus because it's like 90% of the same team does every show. Yeah. A few judges talk about here and there, but um, the support network we've got on that team is, is incredible. And it's like, yeah, you're doing long days and you're away and you're staying in hotels and all that sort of stuff. And, it, and it's hard, hard work. But when you're there, you're around people who are, it's that whole, like, you're, you are the product of who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are what you eat. Yeah. And you go there, and you've got Ryan, who's, I mean, the days that he puts in, um, his wife, Natalie, I mean, I wake up, and she's, like, two in the morning, three in the morning, sending messages. There's that invoice, there's this done, and I'm like, this, this woman doesn't sleep. Yeah. Like, you have then got guys like Dan, takes, Dan Wilburn. And, and, takes, man. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, that's, I mean, that's why the PCA is what it is now. Like, that's why he's are able to do worldwide shows, 32 shows in the UK, you know, 34. every year. 34, sorry. Oh, I don't know about you. I, I feel like um, I, I spoke to you after the first podcast we did. Um, I spoke to you a bit about it. I feel like a, a huge amount of responsibility now. Um, I was speaking to Phil Wright the other day, and he was like, it's like, take stock, man. And he's like, I wouldn't be a bodybuilder if you guys hadn't put that show on. Mm -hmm. He's like, I was in a really bad place, man, in lockdown. And then you kept saying you're putting it on. So he's like, so I kept training. Kept on my diet, kept on plan, and eventually hit stage and he won our Mr. Aberdeen class. But he's like, just think how many... Shout out to the OG Mr. Aberdeen. Eh? Yeah, shout out to the OG Mr. Aberdeen, big Phil. Um, he's like, I wouldn't be bodybuilding that. I might not even be but I don't think But e I don't think either one of us could have seen it ever getting to sort of what it is now. Yeah, you that, know? That's that point. But that's the but you, you don't, you don't see what other people see. Yeah. 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 But then sort of rewind five years when, you know, we're sitting in the car talking about stuff like this. Mm. And it's like we're the previous venue at the art center. It's only about three hundred seats or something like that. Two hundred seventy-two. Two hundred seventy-two, and we're even worth thinking like <laughs> we're going to struggle to fill this Rain place. Man. Like this is, a, this is our first. <laughs> I know because we filled them three times. Yeah, it's like we're. I, I think the, the sort of the. The the worrying thing about it was like it was the first show we were doing. It's like we're kind of worried we're not going to fill this place. I, I get you because we're moving to SWG3 this year. Um, so I recorded with a Calvin the other day, one of the pit stop athletes. Um, so potentially to do a pit stop podcast and bring on mm. a few of the athletes. Also, we've got a Taylor and other ones in there as well. Mm. Um, but we were just having a play because I, I, I do it remote with my own software in the house. I'm like, let's just have a, a play with us and see if it works. But I was telling him that, like, the weight I feel on my shoulders because the, the SWG3 is. It's expensive. Yeah. Right. It's city centre stuff. The capacity is enormous. I've got vendors paying to be there. Yeah. So previous, mm -hmm. previously, I, I would just say to the vendors, look, I'll chuck in some money and I'll go to charity. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we, we've done it a um, couple of years ago when, when Reese died um, and put all the money towards his charity. And I've done yeah. the same last year. I'm like, okay, chuck some money in because the venue cost wasn't massive being a council owned venue. Yeah. We're doing huge numbers of tickets, like getting an extra few hundred quids now here and there, right? Um, we'll chuck it in a charity. But this year they're paying to be there because yeah. I, I need to recoup some of the costs because yeah. we've got two rooms side by side. Um, it, it feels like a big responsibility. And I've still got a little bit of nerves about mm -hmm. how is this going to go because we've never used that venue before. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, you're shooting fish in a barrel, man. If you've got anything to do with fitness that you're selling there, I think there's going to be five, six hundred people at least in that building, who are going to be, who can have money to spend. Here's we, what we do. So we've actually just put out the 70% uh, sold announcement um, <sighs> on Instagram earlier, and we are looking at close to 1,000 capacity Oof. for that one. That's massive. Um, we still so, got about 40 or 50 tickets left to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. So we but, we, yeah, we done seven, 750 ish last year yeah. in, in Motherwell. Um, but that's just, that, I mean, that's just a phenomenal thought. Obviously, you know, being on the central belt, you're a lot more sort of closer to kind of where the hub of the bodybuilding world in Scotland was before. Mm. And also, you know, I think Rob's idea obviously behind the show was to showcase what's in the north. Um, Beyond the wall. Yeah. And I think 
you know, like Rob was saying, like you're shooting fish in a barrel, like why would you not, like, be, like obviously, you know, we are technically now vendors ourselves. Um, Shout out, we are going to be at the PCA Scottish yeah. selling our wares. I am going to try and get, a, I'm going to try and get one of those bikes, by the way. Please come on by. But to think that we should, we miss an opportunity to be in front of so many people to, you know, to show what we've got almost to offer as well. Like when it comes to the march, like it's that's a huge thing man. for us. Solid training club. So I, don't, I think you can you can almost say like, well, you know what, you know, it's kind of fair that vendors are paying to be at my show because like this is what we're putting on for them. Like that's the same idea you get behind to ours. Scottish bodybuilding as yeah. well. Like, yeah. We're all in this together, man. Yeah. Rising tide lifts all ships and all yeah. that. So we're going to have. Um, kind of artisan pizza van, which will be parked at the front. Um, Sell van. <laughs> uh, and then as you come in, we'll have shout out to Aberdam and Shot and Roll and all our food places. Fat, fat batch. batch yeah. Uh, we'll then have our main sponsors, which is CNP, um, Tough Wraps also. Oh, nice. Um, and then we've currently got another twelve stands lined up, including you guys. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's kind of dual purpose. Um, one is to also recoup some of the massive cost yeah. that is SWG3. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have been there before. I've been a, I've been a few times. <laughs> don't remember much about it? Nah, not too much, not too <laughs> um, much. So I've got the TV studio. Um, so that's where the, it will come in the entrance of the TV studio and that will be registration, tickets, etc. And then you'll come in, there's a bar on the left-hand side and then all the vendors are going to be almost in a kind of C-shape. Yeah. And then behind where the vendors are going to be, We'll have the athlete holding area and tanning and stuff. So there's a set of double doors, um, roughly where the vents are going to be. Yeah. And that's the entrance into the the actual venue, the room. Okay. And then there's another set of double doors, maybe 10, 15 meters back, and that takes you into the backstage. Now, so you're going to have like a competitors only in that way. So they go straight in, yeah. there's a set of stairs up on the stage. The stage is around 13, 14 meters wide. It's elevated to about 1.5 meters. Um, Sours. Yes. About that size, uh. <laughs> yeah. Rain, yeah. Man, um, rain man feels. I think it's. I think <laughs> it's about your height. No, it's not it's short, it's shorter than me because I'm. As we all know, I am rather tall. <laughs> I'm five ten, and I've I've got it in proof. Um, I mean, I think putting it in comparison, I, I don't know, it's not a pissing contest, you know what I mean? But I think it's certainly a bigger stage than, than what the, we've got. The, the stage was, so obviously it's a former works, it's like a kind of warehouse type building. Mm -hmm. So that this was my nervousness. I'm like, obviously it, it's set up for dance events, right? Now the sound system's obviously going to be absolutely banging for mm -hmm. that reason. Yeah. The lighting, again, I saw, I sent this to, to Ryan. Um, now Ryan actually, um, I'm pretty sure I've told you this, Rob, Ryan paid to go on a lighting course. So he went on a, on a lighting tech course, so he actually speaks lighting tech. They've got their own language. They talk about... Shout out to Ray um, at the ballroom. Hughes and Angles, and he's like, just he knows the name of the lights and all that. Yeah. He knows all that stuff, so he can talk their talk, because the lighting... Obviously, the show is the most important thing. Yeah. Right? The show has to be... But after that, you're then looking at the photography, because that's your yeah. memory of the show. So we invest a lot into the lighting. So he looked at the lighting setup and went, that's really good. However, we've bought another 20k worth of lights yeah. that he's bringing up to I saw be... that getting set up at the, the Hull show. And I was yeah. like, ah, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so we don't we're, have that. we're bringing these up for these lights to be rigged. Um, we've had to bring in a... So SWG3 don't have their own seats. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring in a separate vendor to supply seats and stuff as well. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to it. And as I say, there is a, a slight nervousness on my part. I'm like, okay, so we need to make sure we get the vendors in. Stage is dressed. We need to get this, get the rigging done, mm -hmm. get the t t there's, there's all these boxes. I mean, it's running a show. Right? Yeah. But this is. If you build it, they will come. We we have used Mother Row for years. Yeah. Um, they know what to expect for us. We don't what to expect for them. Everything's set out. We put on a good show. Job done. Yeah. This is new. This is different. And obviously. Level up. Well, that's yeah, the thing. You, you've, you know, you're not just going with a show anymore. You're putting on an, an actual expo here. Yeah. Which is something that the Scottish scene hasn't seen since, <laughs> I'm going to say 2017 or 2018 for the SFN Last expo. SFN, yeah. Yeah. So, and again, I'm not sure if we've um, spoken to this before, but I actually approached the SEC mm -hmm. about putting on an actual expo. Mm -hmm. 
Um, because again, I think Scotland needs it and deserves mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but well, they, I mean, why not? You know what I mean? Well, the why? market's there, isn't it? If yeah. you're getting a thousand people rocking up to your show and we're getting 500, the market's out there, so yeah. And again, the and this feeds into the first timers thing there are so many people out there that go to your gym who buy the clothing, who have got the shaker, who train religiously, they eat the diet, but they're not bodybuilders. Yeah. Or maybe not bodybuilders yet. They're not competitive they're, bodybuilders. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they're on that cusp. Mm -hmm. If you create this bodybuilding and fitness expo, like that, this feeds into next year's first timers yeah. and it kind of creates a funnel, which again helps out kind of clothing, it helps out supplement companies, coaches, helps out the whole industry. So I'm like, okay, so I spoke to SEC and they were like, we don't have your date for, because um, we always go uh, the second Sunday in April in the Scottish show, our calendar's pretty much set. And we don't have your date for 24, but we can do you on 25. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they wanted 15K up front just to hold the date. That didn't include the building of the stage, the rigging of the lights, none of that stuff. Oof. Now, when the PCA put on their expos, um, you, you got the finals? No. No, no. no. So we put on, Only obviously, your, your expo, you think of your body power and stuff like that, right? You might have a show there, but the main thing is the expo. Mm -hmm. When the PCA put on an expo, the main thing is still the show. The main yeah. thing is still the competitors. The expo is built around the show. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so you're looking, I think the SEC, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, right? But say it was 20 grand, 25 grand. And I'm like, how much do you need to be charging vendors to be there? And then how many tickets do you need to sell? Yeah, it's big. And it's realistically, big is this something that we can do next year? Which is why, I mean, I'd, I must have spoke to 30, 40, 50 venues because Mother has got a, an issue with the ADT concrete in the roof, so they've, they've just closed. Yeah. So I had to move. So I'm like, if I'm going to move, I'm going to level up. Yeah. I need to step this game up because we sold out every year. So let's take the chance and let's let's go somewhere better. And that's when I spoke to the, the EICC in Edinburgh, I spoke to all these places. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, so where do we go? Mm -hmm. And SWG3 just really fits the bill because I can get both rooms side by side. Mm -hmm. We can put on, I'd say more a mini expo. So if we include um, Tough Wraps and CNP, the PCA merchandise stand, we're looking at maybe 15 stands. Mm -hmm. So that's enough for you to get a bite to eat, mm -hmm. grab a cookie or something sweet. Uh, we've missed Bikini Fitness there doing her thing, Valhalla mm. Clothing, you guys, never ending. Pit Stop's going to be there, CNP's going to be there, Dave Crossland's going to be there. Yeah. Like, there's all this stuff you can have a wander about, you can take a bit of time out of the show, um, get something to eat, come back in, mm -hmm. see your mate, go back out. And I thought, right, that, this works. But taking that up to that next level yeah. of full expo is a big, big jump. So I think we'll probably be assuming this year goes according to plan in SWG3 for the next, for the foreseeable. Mm -hmm. And then if the demand starts coming up, again, this is the first time we're asking vendors to pay to be there. Yeah. So potentially next year, they're going to, people will go and go, my God, that was a huge success. These these guys smashed it at that yeah. venue. I want to be there next year. And then I'm like, okay, like we're maxed out now on vendor stands. So the following year, maybe we have to look and see what we do differently. But... It's evolving, it's growing, as you say, it's, it's taking everything up a notch. Um, I'm hoping this is going to be something that Scotland's never really seen before. Mm -hmm. Again, having pit stop doing the, the open day with CNP the night before, we're creating more of a weekend yeah. rather than just a show mm -hmm. and making the whole thing an, an event. Similar, not similar to what we're doing. Like we, we're trying to make, like, I think, was it year two? I think a year two, Andrew Chappelle stopped us running the gym. Yeah. And he was like, you two take a minute. I think we were in there trading arms or something. So yeah, um, this was the this was the day before the show. So this was a Saturday, and it was probably about two, three o'clock in the afternoon, right? So obviously Steph's downstairs, Tana and everyone up doing her thing, and me and Rob just kind of training in warehouse. Just went up. Club. She got a bit of a bit of a pump on, and we're like, okay, just kind of get ready for the next day. We bumped into Andy Chappelle, who was one of our judges at the time, and he said, "Just stop for two seconds, guys. He just look about. He's like, this was you guys, because like we stopped for a minute. I was like, wait a minute." This is fucking packed, eh? Whereas Rams, was absolutely like athletes, stacked people who people. never set foot in the gym before, yeah. videographers, photographers, like the place was bouncing. And the amount of different people that was in there, like, because yeah. then the, the year after that, we had obviously Ollie drove all the way up from Englandshire. Yeah. He had some of his athletes with had him. all the heavy duty then, guys in. Yeah, as well. all the heavy duty guys were in filming. And then all the sponsors, all the 
you know, Highland Supplement Centre was up, well, yeah. down rather. Like the, the team that whole weekend the whole, is electric. Like but all these different communities. This year we've got place. Dave Crosland up on the Saturday as well. But the, do a, a seminar, it's free for competitors. Mm -hmm. But this is my point about not seeing what other people see because you're so lost. Yeah. And again, Ryan and I have this discussion all the time. We are so focused on, right, that didn't go well. How improve, do we improve yeah. that? Right. I think we can do this better this year than last year. How do we, right? And it, you're always looking to go once. And anyone who is successful in any walk of life mm. does this. Right? If you if you literally sit back and go, oh, my show was great, don't need to do anything. Yeah. Do the same next year, guys. Right? It's a, it's a slippery slope. I'm just, my, my chat is one notch round on the dial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, but you're, you're going to go downhill. If you sit back and go, do you know what? I smashed that. That's great. Mm. But you do need to take a minute and go, I mean, I, by no means can I take any kind of plaudits for how good the PC is. The PC was a monster long before me. I'm quite heavily involved now in a lot mm. of stuff, but that was a monster long before I got involved. As you say, the granite was was you, was you two. Mm. So you do need to take a wee step back and go, yeah, this, 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 this was us. Mm -hmm. But you, you need to be careful when you're doing that. Yeah, I'll take, um, a, take a wee step back the day after the show. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. <coughs> but yeah, I mean, every, every, every time we do, we, we do kind of take stock every year now, and we kind of, like, we take it with a little bit of, like, a pinch of salt, if you want to say it like that. Like, we don't, we say, you know what? That was fucking brilliant. Like, that was a phenomenal day. We had great fun. But we won't be like, that was fucking unreal. It's the exact same thing again next year, because doing the exact same thing every year, you're going to get boring. Yeah. We're also looking yeah. at feedback from competitors. That's pretty important, eh? So, yeah. like, nobody's going to be like you can't please everyone. But things like the the first year with Caroline Jarrett, she was like, "Rob, do you know that did work well?" And Caroline won our masters and our Mrs Aberdeen. Mrs Aberdeen, yeah. Um, Caroline was like, "Do you want to be really handy for the competitors? Because we have a really nice competitors area with uh, with seating, mirrors, a stage. All the hair and makeup people are through there. So it's a really compared with some other shows I've been to, it's a really nice thing for competitors to be able to have, like privacy. She was like, if we had just a wee TV and a, a video feed so we could watch the show and we didn't have to interact with people, um, that would be amazing. I was like, all right, okay, let me go speak to them. So I went and spoke tech to Ray. And we're like, is that something we could do? And he was like, sure, yeah. So now in our competitors area, we have a, a projector and the show's projected onto the, onto the competitors area. So if you're if you're not wanting to deal with people, if you're wondering what class is up, like you don't have to pop your head out the door. It's just right there, no popping out from a curtain, none of that stuff. Show is literally there happening in front of you. That puts everyone at ease. Mm -hmm. Like so many people are chuffed with that. And that's us listening to feedback and trying to just make it a little bit sexier. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the balance of that mentality. I mean, like you mentioned earlier, Pete, you're like, how, how do you do that? Like what I'm doing and <laughs> most of the time I'm thinking, I'm not doing enough. I need to be doing more. Mm -hmm. Like I said, obviously full time job, PCA coaching. Um, and I want to do my postgrad in nutrition as well. Um, but I did have to sit and think and go like, do I do that now? Or do I wait on? Yeah, where are you squeezing some, that? Some, something else free. No, but that's. A, well, I'm now looking to do um, my own podcast with a PCA, mm -hmm. and then potentially the pit stop podcast as well. Um, I think now, good to have some insight into how that that big month. Not that we're going to copy and I think they do. Um, but You've written it down though, yeah? Yeah, I've written this all down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think having some level of insight, um, like Ryan giving me a, a five minute conversation at the at the Hull, uh, the Hull show, it was great for me, because I was like, I, I'm just a small time wee fish. It was good for him to uh, let me pick his brain for five minutes. Was, there any, do for hands. was there, any, there any stuff on there that you actually kind of smashed through the last few minutes to um, tidy it up? You're not asked, because I've just waffled. I think we'll just go with that a closing thought, will we? So, why are we doing this? I think should be the way we wrap it up. Um, why are we doing this together? So, a lot of a lot of other shows, federations and stuff stay apart. I think, uh, in my eyes, Scotland needs to move as one um, for it to have the the voice and the presence mm -hmm. it deserves in the bodybuilding landscape. See, yeah. Um, so the reason we've asked you to come on um, is to elevate Scottish bodybuilding. And I think too many people are like, oh, you can't be friends with them because they promote that or they run that business. I think that just dilutes what uh, what Scottish bodybuilding is for me. So that's uh, that's why we we want to have you on the day. Yeah. Right like like I said, it's not it's not a case of you know it's us or you guys. It's it's Scottish bodybuilding. 
that is kind of the main focus the of talent. today. The talent, I fucking preach on every year, anytime someone speaks to me, and that's the whole reason behind the show, the talent coming out of Scotland blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Jack, Andy, Greg, Aaron, like just absolute powerhouses in bodybuilding, and there's just not a big enough platform in Scotland for them, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I think just to kind of temper that, it's obviously you guys are going to focus on what Granite's doing. Yeah. Right? And Granite has to be successful in terms of numbers and finances. Right? If, if this was costing you thousands every year to put on... It wouldn't um, be viable. Right? No, but, no, but this yeah. is the thing. It's, it, people complain about the money sometimes, and, and there are some feds that charge a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Understand. But it has to be viable. Yeah. Right? If you are putting all the time and effort, like you said, Pete, for, for months into planning this and doing all the work, and that costs you a fortune, it, yeah, you run it for a year, maybe two years, and you're like, you know what? I'm losing money. This doesn't work. Yeah. Right. So you need to focus on granite and do what works for granite to make granite a successful show. But that doesn't mean that you have to be negative and derogatory towards of everything else that happens in Scotland. I mean, that's yeah. it was a couple of years ago we, we were potentially changing dates and I was going to have to go on the date you had. That I'm yeah, like, yeah. Rob, are you able to move your date just so we're no clashing because I don't want to cause any issues? And yeah. it's like that. That's all it takes is a little bit of cooperation mm -hmm. yeah. between whether it's federation, whether it's people, whether it's whatever it is. Now, unfortunately, not everyone, as you say, sees it like that. Yeah. Um, but if, if we can just try and work together a little bit, yeah. um, I mean, saying to you guys come and sell merch at the show, that doesn't harm the PC in any way, yeah. but it benefits you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Massively. And massively. It's like, we're, we're massively grateful for the, um, the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's just, how can we work together? How can we... You're again, free t-shirts in the post, by the way. <laughs> and we've we done the same with the, the pit stop evening. So we've got CNP as the main sponsor. Yeah. So Neil was like, well, can we do something? Because Tannin's in the same place. Might as well, and I yeah. went, well, we can do something. Now, you stock CMP products. CMP have paid to sponsor us. As long as you can square us with CMP, CMP are happy doing something together. And it works for everyone and no one's going to get upset. Then let's do it. Mm -hmm. let, let's do it. Because that benefits whether it's athletes are yeah. getting tanned or you've brought your partner or your friend with you. Go and get a free CMP sample. You're going to need to wait 45 minutes on them getting tanned. Come and hang about, have a chat with me, the PCA pros, have a look around the shop, whatever it might be, right? But just, it's just adding something. Yeah. Rather than the, the infighting and the bullshit and the, the, the cattiness. It just, it doesn't benefit anyone. No. It doesn't benefit, as you say, Scottish bodybuilding. Yeah. So you need to make sure what you guys are doing works for you guys. But if you can do that while retaining, like, just being a decent human. A relationship, yeah. Yeah. We do our best. I think on that, um, you know, maybe we'll stop there. But I mean, we can't thank you enough for obviously know, being here, man. Obviously thanks driving up the road, it's, a long, it's obviously a, a pretty decent drive. Um, but yeah, just I mean, putting this together with us, like it's just it's huge, man. It's huge. We'd we'll, like to think this this is a this is a massive thing moving forward, and you know, maybe other federations maybe will take note. Obviously, or I'd like to think they'll take note of what you say and be like, you know what? Let's actually start working together. Let's start bringing Scottish bodybuilders up. Let's give them the platform. Let's give them the shows. Give them everything we can. Give them the best chance that they can to make Scottish bodybuilders great again. Make Scottish bodybuilding great again. You could get a, a Trump hat with that one. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get printed. Yeah. <laughs> print it. They're on the way. Yeah. And then, then you could go build a wall. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just right you like Aberdeen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking more across England. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Uh, let's wrap that up, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. Okay. Episode two, three weeks out from the show. Like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you want to see. We'll follow keep going. Coach by Stephen as well. I follow Coach by Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Brum, brum, shh.